Hello again, I'm Blunty and this is the Sony Bloggy Touch and aside from being a very attractive piece of industrial design with its subtle curves and brushed metal casing, it's a very capable pocket high def video camera. The backside is dominated by the 3 inch 16x9 capacitive touchscreen display from which the bloggy touch draws its name, and just one big button which as you may have guessed by now, starts the video recording. Around on one of the long sides you'll find two buttons, the smaller of which is the power button, the other is a shutter button for snapping photos with, and up here is the stereo microphone, around the other side there's a HDMI port. Down on the other edge you'll find the pop out USB plug which thankfully releases only with a nice deliberate pressure so it won't burst forth unexpectedly in your pocket. It. That can be embarrassing. The only real misstep of the design of the hardware is where they've stuck the tripod mount because the natural shooting position for recording a video in the correct widescreen aspect ratio is to hold the device like this, which means that if you're wanting to use it on a tripod, you'd better make sure you can do this, which not all tripods can. Startup time is incredibly fast. You can go from powered down to recording in literally moments, which is brilliant. There's nothing worse than missing something cool because you're waiting for the damn camera to finish booting up. Now, because Sony have put the touchscreen on, it means they can do away with many of the little buttons and fiddly thumbsticks usually found on these type of cameras. You've got your playback menu for reviewing what you've shot or deleting the unwanted, a self-shot timer for 2 or 10 seconds, which works both for shooting stills and for starting the video a menu for selecting your recording mode and resolution of video and stills with a choice of 2, 8 or 12 megapixel stills and video in either full 1080p at 30 frames per second or 720p at either 30 or 60 frames per second and finally the main settings menu which weirdly is the only part of the entire user interface which doesn't automatically rotate depending on the orientation of the device but while it's odd and slightly annoying, it's not really a big deal because really, you'll rarely need to dig into most of the settings in here once you set it up for the first time. The touchscreen interface also offers you a 4 times digital zoom slider to give you relatively smooth control over both the level of zoom and how quickly you get there. Although, as I say in every review of a camera with a digital zoom, it's best not to use it. Just walk there instead because you lose image quality simply because of the nature of how digital zoom works. So that's the hardware, let's take a look at what it spits out because let's face it, it's no good looking pretty and having a clean, sensible, intuitive user interface if it's not any good at getting the job done. Good news! The bloggy is good at getting the job done. It actually does quite a superb job. The image it gathers is crisp and clear, the colours are well saturated, and it doesn't blow out on the bright end like many pocket cameras have a tendency to do. And it maintains a good amount of detail across its dynamic range. It adjusts quickly and comparatively smoothly to changing exposure as well. And the automatic white balance, which you have utterly no control over at all, does a decent enough job in all but the most challenging situations. Unlike most cameras of this type, which have a fixed focus lens, the Bloggy Touch also features autofocus, allowing you to take nice close-up macro style shots, and then have the camera automatically adjust to regular shots. Like most autofocus systems though, this will involve the focus hunting back and forth a bit before it locks on. But that's fine for the type of purposes that people buy this type of camera for. It does, however, create one of the only really annoying flaws of this camera, and that's its tendency for the focus to start hunting at unexpected moments, and sometimes screwing up a shot altogether. It doesn't happen a lot, but because you've got absolutely no manual control over the focus system, when it does happen, it can be a big annoyance. Back onto that digital zoom. This is the extreme extent of the zoom. As you can see, there's some obvious jaggies and other visual artifacts, but it's not quite as eye-violatingly awful as you may expect. And the reach is acceptable. But if we zoom back in again, BAM! There's an example of the automatic focus system falling over. Here we can see the difference between the recording modes. Both of these were recorded at 720p, and as you'd expect, there's a lot more motion blur on the 30 frames per second file. But also of importance here is that unlike many other pocket cameras, including the original Sony Bloggy, the 720p mode is not cropped down or zoomed in from the 1080p mode. This means you get exactly the same angle of view in both modes. The performance in low light is okay, not what I'd call brilliant, but it's far better than 
I expected. Like the iPhone 4, in low light, the camera seems to resist trying to boost the gain too far, which would introduce a lot of image noise and artifacts. So what you get is a dark, but clear and acceptably noise-free image. It also does not try dropping the frame rate down in low light. Some cameras will do this trick, which will get you a brighter image, but it will make motion stuttery and frankly hideous. The bloggy touch, however, maintains the frame rate you ask of it, which means even in 2am walk home from the pub through the local park darkness, should you inexplicably come across a fire spinner, you can record the smooth glowing arcs of his fire stick properly. Unlike some other cameras, which you might wind up something like this. One of the other terrific things about this camera is that it has image stabilization built in, and the reason this is so important in a camera this small and this light can be most easily shown when compared to a camera of similar size and performance but lacks any stabilization. In this case, it's my iPhone 4. The first thing you may notice is the bloggy touch has a slightly wider angle of view than the iPhone, which is nice, but as soon as I start walking you'll see a very stark difference. The bloggy does an absolutely superb job at taking the shaky and juddery motion caused by walking and producing a video with a much more fluid and pleasant motion. You'll also notice that the bloggy touch adjusts for the white balance difference caused when moving between sunlight and indoor fluorescent lighting much better as well. However, the bloggy does lose out when it comes to changing focus. As while the iPhone 4's focus is both fast and can be manually controlled when needed, the fully automatic focus of the bloggy touch doesn't always behave as you may want. Aside from the occasional quirks of the autofocus, I was very impressed with the bloggy touch. It's slender, light, fits very comfortably in your pocket. It will hold more than two and a half hours of video and photos on its eight gigabytes of inbuilt memory, and it spits out a surprisingly good video for a camera in its class. And the battery will let you suck in just under two hours worth of crispy high def footage between charges. And thanks to the folks at Sony, I've also got two brand new bloggy touch cameras to give away to you wonderful folk who have the attention span to watch all the way to the end. <laughs> all you have to do to be in the running is leave a comment on this video and attempt to convince me why you need one. I'll pick two winners on Monday the 21st of February 2011 and will contact you for a shipping address and have Sony send you out your shiny new camera. Easy. I'm Blunty, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you next time.